Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Um, I'm really excited today to share a card making process with you. And I say process because I haven't pre-planned it too much. Um, so you'll be seeing the thought process as I make a card, but I'm going to be focusing on the Textures Constellation stamp set. This is an A5 stamp set, it's two A6 stamps. Um, and yeah, they're just absolutely beautiful. They're kind of tarot card type theme. So uh, we've called it constellations. There's a lot of stars in here and such, but there's also other things like the uh, sort of crystal ball in there too. So if you love geometric shapes, this is going to be perfect as well. This is the one I'm going to be working with today. Now I'm also probably going to be bringing in the In The Stars stamp set. So the collection is called In The Stars and this is the actual In The Stars set. So this has got lots of elements. Now they look quite solid on there because my ink, my stamps are uh, all dirty, as you can see. Um, but these images actually have lots of uh, little stars and galaxy effects in them as well. So they're really detailed. They're absolutely beautiful. So I'll put that to the side for now, but I'm probably going to come back to that one. So looking at this, I'm going to first of all stamp it in black onto white so you can really see the detail. But then I'm also going to be stamping onto this a beautiful teal colour. This is my favourite. Now, if you've got a textured cardstock like I have here, um, I think this was a Sizzix cardstock, I believe. Um, um, very often what you find is there's texture more so on one side than the other. Because I'm stamping and then emboss, heat embossing, I'm going to use the smoother side to stamp on too. So you'll just get better, um, better detail that way. So I'll put that to the side for now because we'll stamp the black and white version first of all. And I've actually made quite a few cards with this collection, just in black and white, maybe with hints of um, gold in there. And they've looked really beautiful. So it's worth exploring maybe just some monochrome uh, projects as well with these. So popping that into my stamping block, it's a nice large stamp so I'm just going to take it away and roll it just half and half so it hasn't actually moved from the position. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, it's quite bright there but I've got a bit of, um, it's a bit of a few marks on my cardstock there. The light's really bright today so I apologise for that, hopefully you'll still be able to see everything nicely. So let's just stamp this in black. I'm using a Memento ink pad. I'm hoping this is one of my newer ones because I've got one that's uh, starting to get a bit old now. I'm going to ink all over this image. And the stamping platform that I'm using is the Creative Craft Products one. And this is just wonderful because as you can see here, when I close the platform, it's not actually stamping onto the paper yet it's only when you press down that the stamp touches the paper so you can make sure everything's lined up so just checking yeah i think this might be one of my older ink pads so I still see you've got a really nice image there but i do like to just go over it twice just really if i'm stamping in black i like to have a nice solid black ink there we go fold and stamp once more and I've got the magnets holding my cardstock still, so I know that each time I re-ink my stamp and go over, it's going to give me a nice sharp image. Beautiful. So there we go. And then I'm going to put my teal colour cardstock in. And like I say, I'm doing I'm stamping onto the smoother side, so the reverse side really of the cardstock. Make sure my magnets are not going to be in the way. No. And this time I'm going to go on with an embossing ink, so a Versa Mark. You should have, because I've cleaned my stamp, you shouldn't see much of the black ink left over. But if you do, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be covering this over with a nice gold embossing ink afterwards anyway. So just release the magnets. And I tend to usually pop the entire pot of my embossing powder on a project because I'm only using little pots. And I'm going to sprinkle it all back into the pot anyway. So just give this... A little move around to make sure that the entire image gets caught with powder before I then put it back into the pot here. There we go, look at that, isn't that so pretty? I mean, I, I, I now I've got to decide because I'm going to paper these, I'm going to layer these up which one do I put on top of which in fact I'm, I might even be able if I'm clever to make two cards in one here let's have a look so let's put the stamp back here it goes I'm going to cut into this 
I'm just going to take the outside of the diamond that's in the centre here. Ooh, there's thunder in the background. Look at that. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into this area and cut out. Oh, so that would have been that way. Yeah, that way. I might come into this area and actually cut out. Or I could cut it out of here. A triangle from there. And then put, also put that on top of here. So we've got the white and black. It could just be this... In fact, maybe just this moon shape, and then there's a circle here. I can start playing, so let's see. I think maybe the triangle and the moon. Let's do that. What, so what I need is a, a craft knife. There we go. So I've just got that element. Let's pop this in there and that on top. That is starting to layer up absolutely beautifully. Now I'm also wondering, I think one thing I also want to do is create the blue frame. So I'm going to come back to my embossed, teal embossed image and I'm going to cut out the remainder of the frame. Now some of this is still incorporated in these diamonds that I cut out, but some of it is here. So I'm just going to be careful about making sure I cut out the right areas there's a lot of lines a lot of detail so have a good look and plan first before you start cutting isn't that so pretty there we go so that will fit on there back into that frame lovely okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out the rest of this frame here and then I'm going to glue all of this down and we'll go from there as to what we do next to finish this card off there we go so i've glued all those layers down and i love the way that embossing is picked out i think i want to add some gold into the center here um so what i'm going to do is just take some glue here and very very lightly spread it with a fine tip applicator just into the center of those circles as i've said already the beauty of this stamp is that there's so many elements and so many shapes that you can really play with. I've got three little circles here, so I'm going to pick these out because I love the way the gold shines and shimmers, um, but I feel like the middle, the centre there is just lacking a little bit. So then pop embossing powder on top of this. And of course you can use glues as uh, to hold your embossing powder. You can absolutely do that. All sorts of different glues, whether it's uh, double-sided tape, um, things like that. You know, experiment with the glues you have. Now, because this is a wet glue, I've now got the option of either leaving this to dry, the glue to dry before I heat emboss, or doing it sooner. If I do it sooner, I'm going to get kind of a um, an effect where the glue underneath will bubble so I'm going to just give that a few moments to dry first not completely because it was a thin layer and then I'm going to heat set so in the meantime I can be cutting around the edge here I'm going to cut around the edge you can do it in a trimmer of course I'm going to do it with my scissors purely because I don't want to catch the embossing powder there but I'm just going to leave myself a white border around the edge here isn't that just so pretty now you can also if you want to use your fine tip applicator or something like a quickie glue pen if you wanted to just to highlight some of the lines in the background not all of them maybe uh, it's an option for you you can also go in which I think I might do with a black pen so if I can find myself a black uh, fine liner which I think I've got here somewhere let's have a look no, that's a very fine one I want a slightly larger one here and I might just come in and a few of these circles actually color those in black as well but they are here aren't they there we go so I've just picked out I'm not sure how well you can actually see that but just picked out some black detail 
gorgeous okay so I'm now going to heat these three gold dots in the middle beautiful absolutely love that gorgeous card okay so as I say black card base now to make my card bases what I tend to do is bring my trimmer put my cardstock in and I'm actually going to be working on so this is the front of the card but it's upside down as such so the panel that I want to mat onto the front of my cardstock put there bring this along so that I've got a gap between the scoring line and the edge of the mat the same as the other two edges there looks about right butt it up against there give it a good score okay and then lift my ruler up and fold this over and if you've got a bone folder which I should have somewhere there it is this is a nice sturdy cardstock a really strong one actually I think it's 300 GSM might even be more than that there we go so now I can put this back in and cut the other end so using the blade this time rather than the scoring tool cut the other end and then open it up pop your mat back on and then we cut the height too I say that I say we cut the height but actually the beauty of this is that it can be horizontal or vertical it doesn't matter look at that so absolutely perfect it just sets that card off as it and I don't I will put a sentiment on there but I'd be quite happy to send this off without a sentiment on now I'm going to use the reverse because I've, when I scored it I've got a bit of a, a groove on there so we've got <laughs> it's a bit like a, um, a viking hat isn't it with the horns so that's on the back but that's where we cut out the white version that's fine just add glue around nobody will know and it just saves you stamping a third image and this is a bit warped from the heat that we applied when we were heat embossing hold it all down nice and flat that nice strong card base the black cardstock that will prevent um, that from bowing once it's all glued down lovely really happy with that I love that so I will find a sentiment I've got um, I've got in the stars and believe within the range I didn't actually need to come to those because there's so much involved here um, I've also got all of these lovely um, dies here so we've got the full panel that we could cut from but we also have the individual elements here too we could just put a word across there so I'll have a look at that um, maybe even just I mean the word destiny is lovely but it's a large the word destiny is a large die I'll just show you it could go like that though it's a very large die so perhaps perhaps like that or we could go for a smaller one something like dreamer or believe we could just have across the top or across the bottom sort of sitting on the line there there we go love that i'm really happy with that so that is the constellations a5 stamp set I've also then incorporated the celestial words as well so you'll find everything available linked below uh, exclusively at craft stash um, and anything else I've used as well things like the Versamark ink pad things like the gold embossing powder all of those are also going to be available and linked below at craft stash too so thank you for joining me if you haven't subscribed before please do I'd love to see you back here again uh, for more tips tutorials and projects like this take care everybody I'll see you soon